Church, praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, we, we want to praise our Lord for He has died for our sins, or He died for our sins to save us and to set us free. Amen.
Set me free. 
Jesus is lifted up. Praise Jesus. So as we raise our voices, I just like us to submit to the Lordship of Christ. Let us submit to the name of Jesus that is above every other name. We worship you, Jesus.
Just keep on worshiping the Lord and raising his name above everything in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Your name is lifted up today, O oh God. You're worthy, O oh God. Worthy is your holy name, Jesus.
moment and lift up the name of Jesus. We rise just a moment. There's no us without a Jesus. together father we thank you and we give you praise thank you because of this wonderful morning thank you for giving us the opportunity to come and hear your word we open our spirit to receive from you this we pray in the name of jesus let's give a clap offering unto jesus amen yeah turn to one two three people welcome in the house them in the house and let's sit, get seated together Thank you that you came today. We've been doing a series now for three weeks. We started from the book of Luke, and uh, we went 22. Luke chapter 22, we did chapter 23 last Sunday, and now we are in chapter 24, uh, and that's where we finish. Those that came for the first service, uh, I did a very different sermon in second service because I went to the book of Matthew. I think it is Matthew... 27. The same, you know, uh, like I had explained to us, these two, uh, the, the four Gospels, they talk about the same thing differently. Matthew captured the story of Luke chapter 23 in a very different way. There are some things I would want you to go and read that we are finding. Uh, Matthew had more details. Matthew talked about Judas, that when they took Jesus to go and crucify him, Matthew tells us, that Judas returned the money that he had taken, gave it back to the chief priest, and they refused. He threw the money, went away, and hanged himself. Matthew tells us Judas hanged himself even before Jesus died. And then he also tells us that the chief priest considered that money that Judas had taken as blood money. And what they did, they bought a field that is even today is called the field of blood. Wakanunua hiyo. It's something that was not captured by Luke. And today we are in Luke chapter 24. I want to, uh, and for those that have come for the very first time, you've not heard us going through this. Uh, this season, we are just reading the Bible. There is no explanation. It's good when the Bible is able to explain itself. And we, want, we, are, we are going through a journey for us to see the word of God becoming real to our lives. We have read so many texts in connection with all that. And even today, that's what I want us to do. To understand the journey. But let me explain uh, something that I find. I mention it, but I hope that we can get the weight of the power of symbolism. People doing something for you to symbolize something. Because symbolism is used so much in the Bible. 
so much in the Bible. So when people think from a canomite, from just the human might, the journey to the cross, it is, it's why. Why would he, if God, if God was the father and this was his son, why could he allow him to go through all that? What did it mean? But you see, it's because you argue that too without understanding the power of symbolism. When I look at government, personally, when I look at government and the way the government work, you realize the power of symbolism. Power of symbolism. They do things that you don't even, you don't even want to think about it. But when you think about it more, you realize, oh, Kumbe, they are doing this to signify this. This is a very godly thing. And that's the whole Bible. Like, when one president is leaving and the other one is coming in, he is given a sword to signify power, transfer of power, isn't it? Eh? Then each, each the president is given a presidential standard that is raised. Everywhere he goes, that must be raised to show that he is the one who is there. The flag is a symbol, meaning if, if a government comes in Kenya and raises the flag, if it is Uganda raises the flag of Uganda in Kenya, it says it is dominating Kenya. It's, it's just a symbol, just that symbol only. Like what happens in all the embassies. In every embassy, they raise their flag. Meaning that that ground that they are given by the government of Kenya is American, American embassy that is now America. When you are there, that is America. Meaning if, even if the soldiers of Kenya want to arrest you and you are able to run, and enter into the compound of the U.S. Embassy, they cannot touch you. One man did that in the U.K. He was the one who had done something that was called the WikiLeaks. And he then, he was chased by the uh, U.K. police. He then had entered the Equidorio or uh, uh, Equidas Embassy. He entered there. And for over three years, he stayed in that compound. The UK police were standing at the gates for three years, waiting for this guy. And he was there, given a room. He was just staying in that room. They couldn't do anything because they are in the UK. But that space, it is the Equidorio flag that they're standing. So, the very, very, poor. and you find the Bible talking about that. When the Bible calls us that we are ambassadors of Christ, when you understand what it means to be an ambassador, that you have the kingdom of God with you. That what you decree is what is in heaven. Now, the issue of the cross is very symbolic. Somebody, I had somebody say, if Jesus, if Jesus was God and, the fa uh, and his father is God, instead of killing his son, why didn't he kill the devil? And everything, and he would be living very, well, very well. But it's because we don't understand these things, the way they work. Even in prayer, once you don't understand how it works, the legal things, the legal things. You know, the Bible is very, it's a very legalistic document. It's like a constitution. If you look at it, it's very legal. In fact, it is, even says that there shall be a judgment day, and there will be a judgment seat, and God is a judge, and he shall charge us. And we even fight the accuser of the brethren. It's just like a court. And sometimes you don't understand these things. So, even as we are going through this journey, you understand, even if we may not be able to expound too much on it, that it was planned, it was pre-planned by God that Jesus would be beaten, that Jesus would be crucified, and in all this, it was showing and it was leaving power to us. Even Jesus being beaten, there was a reason that by his stripes we can pray that we are healed because of those stripes. You may not even understand what's the symbolism of that, but those stripes that he was beaten, bring our healing. That on the cross, there is some, the devil understands it clearly. The devil knows that on the cross, we are able to get our forgiveness. Just by that act. So even as we go through this, understand there was a lot of symbolism that was created. Recently, which has been a very uh, a shocking thing, the princess of UK this week said that she has cancer. She said that she had cancer. And she's under treatment of chemotherapy. And uh, she was just, she just sat on a bench and uh, she just stayed it. And then I saw people saying, some people writing and saying the symbolism that they were trying to show. Because the UK, the, the kingdom, the queen and all that, it's a state of symbolism. Did you see the burial of the queen? 
everything they were doing. You might even think, what are they so ritualistic? Yes, because it's all about symbolism. Everything they would do, she would be driven by a horse, a cult. It has its symbols. Everything they will do, it has a symbol. And they did all that. And every religion, it's all about rituals. It's all about those things, the way they will do their things. Whether it is demonic one, even Freemasonry, when they do their things, it's very ritualistic. And even for us, you find, see, that's what we also do when you're doing the Holy Communion. You can't even explain. You're telling people there is power. We are taking juice, but it is the blood. We are taking some bread, but it is the body. Very ritualistic, and it has its power. But sometimes, if you are ignorant of that, it will never work in your life. So this lady, when she was speaking, you can see what they did. Eh? Uh, when she was speaking about her cancer, behind her, and you'd want you to see, to note that if you go and watch, there are flowers. For you, it's just a picture. But for those that who understand, you realize it was calculated that those, those flowers are there. I can't remember their name. But these flowers are used for cancer survivors. So they made sure she sat there to show that there is hope, even as she is speaking. So for everybody who could understand, was able to know she is speaking, that she believes she'll be well, but behind her, something represents hope. Those flowers are used for hope. They appear before any other flower when summer is coming. So she was trying to speak to the people, but there were people that were understanding differently. Just like one time I read, I read, I think I mentioned here, I read a book that was interesting for me to show how people, even terrorists, they use the power of symbolism. They use the power of symbolism. You know, for us, we just live for what is there. We don't realize that. Once you ta start appreciating the power of symbolism, it will change your mind how you understand what is happening and the, pa the issue of the cross. You realize it brings the issue of baptism. Baptism now comes. And when somebody is going through baptism, it is an issue of, and baptism by immersion. I'm not talking about another baptism. Baptism by immersion. It's an issue of all diplomacy and dignity taken away. And you go like Christ. The Bible says you are buried and you are said with Christ in the water and you are able to come out. It's just symbolism. Let's think about it as we read this story. What happened to Jesus? Remember in chapter 23, and I think I'm almost finishing my sermon. In chapter 23, it was the chief priests and the Sadducees, these are the people of law, who conspired how Jesus was to die. In chapter 24, we find him being taken to the government, the Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, because he's the only one who could give, uh, the, uh, who could give uh, execution orders. The others could not kill anybody. And therefore, the church takes them to the government. The gov and the government, somehow, reluctantly, they were able to give. And now, Jesus has been, was crucified. That's what we read. He was now crucified on the cross. But now, it's interesting how, let me first of all summarize for you, Luke chapter 24, what happened. Luke chapter 24, it is early in the morning after Jesus was, uh, uh, oh, let me ask questions so that I can see whether we understood because I'm teaching. Who is the man who carried the cross for Jesus? Of Aya. Who gave his grave? Kuna wengine tu unatuangalia hivi. Hiyo haukushika lakini ni sawa. Ni sawa. Yes. Where where Simon was from where? Arabia. It is assumed he was a black man. And he was forced into it, but he was willing. Joseph of Arimathea was a rich man. He was actually a Pharisee. He was amongst the the, 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 the priest kaid, you know, in the church and all that, but he never believed with what they were doing. He never agreed with them. But he was a rich man, he gave his grave. Now, when he gave, and he went at us, point as Pilate, can you give me the body of Jesus? And he took the body of Jesus, that's what we learned on, uh, on Sunday, akaibeba, na akaienda, akaifunga, na tukaona, wamama, wamama, we, we saw a lot about the women. The Bible says, they stood, wa, ak, akiweka hiyo, mwili wa Yesu kwa hiyo kaburi walienda na wakaona pale imewekwa wakaenda kuprepare kwa sababu ilikuwa inaingia sabato na wangefanya kitu so that on sunday mornings waende 
Because this was Sabbath. Sabbath is Saturday. So this happened on Friday night. Na amewekwa kwa kaburi. So on Saturday, Sabbath, they couldn't do anything. It was a rest day. So on Sunday morning, and I explained, that is why Christians started worshipping on Sunday. Because we resurrected on Sunday. Otherwise, Sabbath, like the Seventh-day Adventists say, was the day for worship, was the day for rest. But after Jesus died, people started celebrating Sunday as a day of resurrection. So, he was, now, on Sunday morning, the women went. So, I'm summarizing for you, 24, so that when we are reading, I'll not explain a lot. So, women went to the grave. Wakaenda wakaona, amefufuka. Hayuko. So they started, they were wakanza kukubuka hiya. Nasi alisema atafufuka. You know, it's some of the things is you don't even believe totally. Umiona amekufa. But now when they go, they found the stone was rolled away. In one of the gospels, unasikiata wakieda walikuwa nasema, because there was a big stone that was raid. Unajua hii, atuliona hivo, I think Luke also had, had explained, hii kaburi siu kama zetu. Hiyo kaburi ni hile, ni kijiwe kikubwa, you dig through. Unakitoa vitu, unatoa hiyo mawe ndani, kinakuwa sasa ni, it is hewn. The, 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 the stone is hewn. Ime ikona shimo. Sasa hiyo shimo, unaweka mwiri hapo, alafu unawekerea kijiwe kikubwa. So that the smell, even when the person is rotting, the smell does not come out. So ni kijiwe kikubwa sana. So these women are in the morning wakienda warikuwa na urizana, who shall roll away the stones because they wanted to prepare the body of Jesus through spices. Warikuwa nataka kumweka spices, diwa sinuke, na mweke vizuri. They wanted to give him the last rites that they could be able to give him in honor. So, wakienda, they found the, roll ha, the, the rock has been rolled away. Then, wakaona hayuko, wakatoka, wakakimbia, wakaenda, wakaambia the disciples. Peter akiwa moja. Wakaenda, wakamuambia, wakawambia, he is not there. He has risen. Lakini, they never believed with the women. They never believed the women. The disciples. Siu kukua wakikuyu, kuna kitu wanazamanga? Ya tumia gete kagiyo? I think it's everywhere. But, but let me explain. Somebody explained to me that I realized uh, we have always, even though, you know, we think that, that statement by the kikuyus is not a bad statement, actually. Actually, it's not even the way we understand it. So, uh, an old man explained to us, and then I thought, oh, I've always taken it like women are unbelievable. No, that's not the meaning. The meaning was when the women and women would go to fetch water, women were doing everything. When they would go to fetch water in the old days, if they noted strange men, they would come and tell the men, we have seen strange men. And the men would say, ah, ni woga, watu. In the morning, when they would wake up, the cows would not be there. They are stolen. And then they would believe what they were told by them. So the women's word is believed in the morning when you confirm all along what they told you was right. Are you understanding? That is how. But you know the way we take it is like they are unbelievable. It's because they would say they will never believe the women but they will tell you. Just like I can see men. Because the women can easily be able to. So even now they went after they had seen that they went and told them. He told them, the stone has been rolled away and the body is not there. And he has risen because they met with the angel. They did not believe. Peter akiwa moja. So what they were told, when they were told, Peter alitoka hapo, dio. Aka kimbia, akaenda mbaka kwa grave. The Bible says, he looked inside and he believed. Akaenda akaangalia kwa kaburi na kaamini. The issue is, kwani aliona nini dio amini. Aliona yesu labda hayuko, but I will try to explain that. Then after that, the Bible takes us somewhere else. It says, on the same day, two men are walking towards a mouse. Na wakienda, walikuwa natembea. Yesu wakakuja, na wakanza kuongea na yeye. Na walipuongea, akauliza, kwani kuna nini? Wakasema, kwani uwe ni mugeni? A mouse. Wakanza kumuambia about Jesus. Na yeye, walipofika kule walikuwa naenda, Yesu wakajifanya kama naenda uh, Kupita hapo. Wakamambia pana. Si ukuje tukule pamoja. Walipo ingia, he broke the bread. Just like the, the way he did the Holy Communion. And the Bible says, their eyes were open. And they realized it was Christ. Alafu, he disappeared from their midst. 
na wakasema isn't it true that when he was speaking to us our hearts were having a lot of warmth were feeling so good when he was speaking to us kutoka hapo he appears in Jerusalem katikati ya uh, ya, ya, ya wafuasi wake na wakienda hapo hata wao hawakumwamini and he had to show them his cars akiwaonyesha i'm the one that is now the uh, according to the book of Luke chapter 24 and then he went to Bethany akiwa na hao wafuasi wake he rose he ascended to heaven as they watched him akapanda paka wakaona ameenda he would go look and explain Matthew on the same context he has a little more by the way Matthew 27 that we did on Sunday Matthew 27 it also says something that is interesting ilisema nataka uende ujisomee ati wakati Yesu alikufa wale waliokuwa wamekufa walifufuka and people saw them in Jerusalem kuna watu walifufuka na watu wakawaona so now yes i just want to show you that there are few differences in Matthew chapter 28 there is almost the same thing but another thing that we see is Matthew saying that how the rock was taken away from the grave he is able to say that there was a mighty earthquake at the gates because remember on sunday we saw that pontius pilate alienda akaambiwa na chief priest wacha tuweke guards wengi hapo because hawa wafuasi wa yesu wanaweza kuja na waibe hii mwili na waseme hakuwa ati alifufuka ali, ali so kulikuwa na guards walikuwa wamegada hapo kusikuje mtu lakini biblia inasema kulikuja a very big earthquake na hawa guards were trembling then an angel appeared and rolled away the stone matthew tells us that then the guards wakakimbia kwa the chief priest wakawaambia amefufuka amefufuka and the stone has been rolled away the chief priest Matthew tells us they went to Pontius wakasema wacha tudaganye tuseme twende tuambie Pontius Pilate wafuasi wa Yesu wamekuja na wameiba hiyo mwili wameenda nayo so that resurrection story is beaten and they went and told Pontius Pilate and they all agreed to that and the guards the soldiers wakapatiwa kitu kidogo unaona hii kitu ni ya kitambo wakapatiwa kitu na biblia inasema even today that story stuck ya kwamba hakuvufuka mwili ilibiwa na wakafanya hivyo and then uh, Matthew talks about the great commission Yesu akawaambia akapatia na the great commission and the story ends there but let's read the bible now let's go to Luke chapter 24 I'm going to be a little fast because we are just reading we, to, we are just we just want to read the word of god the word of god is enough i don't have to explain it but there is power in it on the first day of the week very early in the morning the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb they found the stone rolled away from the tomb but when they entered they did not find the body of the lord jesus while they were wondering about this suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them In their fright the women bowed down with their faces to the ground but the men said to them why do you look for the living among the dead they are trying to tell the, he, them this is uh, the women Jesus has resurrected he is not here he has risen remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men be crucified, crucified and on the third day be raised again then they remembered his words When they came back from the tomb they told all these things to the 11 and to all the others It was look at the women Mary Magdalene Joanna Mary the mother of James and the others with them who told this to the apostles so there were a group of women who had followed Jesus even during the crucifixion they were saying and the women stood afar off these were the women all of them imagine they're not even considered as the apostles but they had such an attachment with Jesus that they were the first to go to the grave in the morning not the, even the apostles i would have expected the apostles to be there no in fact even pontius pilate and all the other guys they thought the apostles would go it is the women look at the apostles but they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense no oh, the men that are here look at me with guilt let's move on peter however got up and ran to the tomb 
Bearing over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves. And he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Hata yeye, haamini kabisa. Yani wameona lakini, haiwaingi, hamefufuka kabisa. Now, that same day, two of them were going to a village called a mouse, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem? And do you not know the things that have happened there this, in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, he was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers hardened him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. They are giving a summary of everything. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is that day since all this took place. Now understand, even for the disciples, when Jesus told them that he would become king, they thought, remember the story, these people, the Israelites, were under the Roman government. All the way from Rome, Italy. Italy was ruling. You know, let me, let me, let me put something here for you to understand, Kidogo. The Roman Catholic Church is a very big church. And the Pope is very powerful. The Pope is more powerful than many governments. His rule is bigger than many governments. His, the followers of the Roman Catholic, they are estimated to be in billions. Like almost two billion people are Roman Catholic. So the leader... The leader of that church has a lot of power, isn't it? Eh? Very few. I think it's only two nations that have over two billion people. China and India. So you can imagine all the other governments. So any nation you go. And then, Yes? Vatican. Vatican is a nation. Italy, they had to fight. Italy, many years ago, had to agree to give the Vatican City as a nation. So the Pope is a head of state of Vatican, Vatican City. Even when you go to Vatican City, when you go to Rome and you want to enter Vatican City, you are given a visa to be allowed to enter that city because it is a state and he is a head of state. That is why any nation he goes, if, if Pope comes to Kenya, he is received by the head of state as the president of another nation, yet he is a religious leader. Those are things that probably are there today so you can be able to understand. Now, not only was he, so the Pope is ruling so many nations, although in a religious capacity. Now, Caesar was the governor, was the ruler, or the king of Rome. And he had colonized even Israel. Even Israel was colonized. So Israel was being ruled by Caesar through his governors. And one of the governors that we know there was Pontius Pilate. So now look. What? When Jesus would come and say he is the king of kings, some people had hope, even his disciples. They had hope that he is going to overthrow Caesar. Are you understanding? And become the king of Israel. Because that's what he was saying. So they were fighting, oh, this is our redeemer. So that redemption for themselves was not the normal redemption that we talk about. For them, he was to be a redeemer. He was going to come and become the ruler, take away Pilate and Caesar. So that's the redemption they were looking for. No wonder you fight the disciples of Jesus one time. I think it's the father who went to Jesus of the sons of Zebedee. A kind of kaoriza. Yes. When you become the king, will you allow my son, the two of my son, one to be on your left side and your right side? Unajua hiyo ni kusema nini? Utakubali mmoja kuwa deputy president na prime minister. And Jesus would understand. They were not understanding. Do you na wambia? No, you don't understand my kingdom. The lowest will be the greatest. That's what they were thinking. Even when you fight Peter fighting with the, with the, uh, the, the, the soldiers and cutting their ears, because they were, very, they were very carnal, all they are thinking was, Jesus is becoming a king. Now look and understand that. 
when you see, let's go back, Kidogo, I think, verse 20. Oh, yes, no, that's the same one here. Yeah, there, 21. So the, these disciples are saying, but we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem in the context of taking away Pilate and Caesar. That was what they were thinking. They were not getting the aspect of the kingdom of God in terms of how we understand it today. And what is more, it is that day since all this took place. So, amekufa na ameenda. Hope is gone. He will never become king. Mm -hmm. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning. They're talking to Jesus, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who say he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it is just as the women had said, but they did not see. He said to them, how foolish I you are. And how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he was going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us. For it is near the evening, the day is almost over. So he went to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Just as he has done before, the last, that was the last supper, supper, and now he is doing it again. Then their eyes were opened. That's what the Holy Communion, when it is taken in a good way, that's what it does. It opens your eyes. It should open your eyes. And they recognized him. And he disappeared from their sight. Akaenda. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? Panakubuka, the way we were feeling good. They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together. And saying, it is true, the Lord has risen and he has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. Now, who are those? Who amongst them? The 11 disciples are there, isn't it? Eh? Everybody is there. So they, he appeared to them. So they, now they can see him. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. Because they still were not believing that he has resurrected. He said to them, why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones. As you see, I have. So I'm not a ghost. You can touch me. And then he did another thing that ghosts don't do. When he had said this, he showed them his feet and hands. Mm -hmm. And while they were they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement. He asked them, do you have anything here to eat? Because only people with flesh and blood eat. They gave him a piece of broiled fish. And he took it and ate it in their presence. So that they believe he's not a ghost. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophet, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I'm going to send you what your, my father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. These guys were weak. They could not manage to do much. So he's telling them, don't move until what was promised come to you. Uh -huh. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he let them and was taken up into heaven. 
Then they worshipped, worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. Amen. We are done. Thank you. Now, if we were to continue, we would have gone to the book of Acts. And then in the book of Acts, what do we find them doing? Still praying in the upper room. This was 50 days later. Actually, when, like now, after Easter, Easter is on Sunday, if you count 50 days, the Sunday that is there is called the day of Pentecost because Jesus appeared almost two months later. The Holy Spirit came almost, but they were continually, they went there to pray and wait for the Holy Spirit. And he came. Wana sifiwe. Ah, acha tusome Matthew 28. Wana sifiwe. Mimi sihubiri. Tini kusoma Matthew tunasoma Bibiria. Let's go to Matthew 28. Now you see how, and you are able to appreciate how each of them was given an account of Jesus. It, it is shorter. This one is shorter. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. Now you can see he's not very detailed, like Luke. Luke th talked about Joanna, uh, Mary Magdalene and all that. Yeah? There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning. And his clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not. Huh? The, <laughs> the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead for you of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, crossed his feet, and worshipped him. So Matthew is telling us a very different story of what ha happened. Then Jesus said to them, Okay, let's move on. Oh, then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went to the city and deported to the chief priest everything that had happened. When the chief priest, when the chief priest had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money. Telling them, you are to, to say, his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed, and this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. Mm -hmm. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus said to them and uh, came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Think we are done? Good. That is now how. He's able to explain. You can see Luke has more details, but he's uh, skipping some of, the, uh, some of the details. But now, as I wind up, Natukua to Natengeneza Apostles' Creed. Iko? Apostles' Creed. Ah, Kwanza Ifanya. How many people know the Apostles' Creed? Again, you may see a leo. But you need to see Kwanza to Isema, Alafu ni Mwambia, the next part. To Simama Kidogo, we are going to. To say it, because listen, this one, this one, the Apostles' Creed, it's, it's a very good confession. In fact, I'm trying to see whether in all the plug-in programs, this one, they must be doing it. Because I was taught, Oh, na na in the catechist classes, in the Presbyterian church, I was taught a lot when I was young, and it's very good. But I want you to say it as you mean it, because there's something I want to just speak about, just a little, 
uh, to, to benefit us about the power of the cross and what happened. Let's go. I believe, want to go? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Now, listen, let me, let me explain to you. The Apostle Spirit, Ninini, I'm assuming, we assume that everybody knows. Many years ago, all Christians of faith decided what are the main things we agree on. In fact, if what we say in the Apostles' Creed, some people don't believe it, then you have a lot to disagree on, on their faith. So this generally is agreed upon that everybody who is of Christ, the Christians agree, these are the, the basic, the points that we all believe in if you are to be a Christian. So we, let's go back again. That you, that you must confess that you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Because some people don't believe in that. They believe of, in evolution. So if you believe in evolution and you are here, then you're not a Christian. A Christian must believe that God is the maker of heaven and earth. Let's go to point number two. It says, And in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Let me explain it again. Like now, the, the Muslims, they don't believe that God had a son. In fact, they, are very, they, they speak it in a very uh, sarcastic way. Have you ever heard when a Muslim wants to ask, when they talk about the Jesus, they ask you, and who was the wife of God? Because your God has a son. And that is why it differentiates our faith, because we believe that he, Jesus is his son, and he was conceived by the Holy Spirit, not by a man. So it's a very powerful statement. Let's go on. In Jesus Christ, in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. What's the next point? Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered, was, listen, isn't that what we have been learning about? Look at the people that were mentioned. Mary, that was in the beginning. But Pontius Pilate actually is so elevated that we actually is mentioned there. But we also talked about crucifixion, or crucifixion, death, and burial of Jesus. So, born of the Virgin Mary, Okay, let's go there. Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered at the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, there and buried. Mm -hmm. Now, that is key. We must first of all believe that to be a believer. Now, let's go here. This is what I want to, uh, when we sit down, I'll talk about. What did he do? Go. He descended into hell. The third day, he rose again from the dead. That differentiates everything else. Now, some people don't believe he went to hell. Because after he was crucified, between crucifixion and his accession, where was he? Where was he? Now, in the Apostles' Creed, they say he descended into hell. The that day, he rose again from the dead. What happened? He ascended, let's go, he ascended into heaven and seated on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. We also believe there is a judgment. That when you die, there will be judgment. There are people who don't believe. They say when you die, you die. You don't no longer exist. But for us as Christians, one of our faith, and even as HOD, we believe that after death, there is judgment. Uh -huh. The Holy Christian Church. Actually, it to Tunasoma, the Holy Catholic. Catholic means universal church for everybody. So even when you hear the Holy Catholic Church, it's not, it's not the denomination of the Catholic. So that's why like now here, they try to change. In Kikuyu, you are saying, Jeteketia, Kanida, Mogadoriko. Kanida Moderu Mogadoriko. People now started changing and saying, Kanida Wako Doguade. Because that's what it means. So when you see Catholic, it doesn't mean the, the religion. So one, another thing that is so key is to believe in the Holy Spirit. Let's go. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of the fellowship of believers. So if you are not having fellowship of believers, as you say, me, I believe in God. You have a problem of your faith. The communion of saints. Uh -huh. The forgiveness, the resurrection, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's get seated. Thank you. And it's good that you learn, you learn it to confess it and speak it. 
But let's first of all go to the issue of where did the issue of that he went when he was crucified, he went to hell. Let's even talk about hell. There are three things that are sometimes very confusing. In fact, I will not say that even my version or school of thought is the appropriate one. You can debate it, you can do your research. Three names that are mentioned. One talks about hell. Another one talks about hates. And another one talks about Sheol. And then we have the Catholic who have what? Purgatory. Have you ever heard all those three things? Four, four things, eh? Let's call them four. Have you ever heard, if you have ever heard about Purgatory, lift up your hand. That's funny, you don't have Catholics. Who are former Catholics. Purgatory, we don't find it in the, in the regular Bible. It's only in the Catholic Bible. The Catholic Bible has, I think, four more books. Eh? One is called Judith. Another one is Jew. What? So it has that. Purgatory is that they believe this way. The Catholic, they believe this. That when you die, you go to purgatory. And in purgatory, your people, if they loved you more, more, they can pray for you. They can even give offerings in church. And the Catholic father or a priest can pray on your behalf that God can take you from purgatory and take you to paradise. That is not in the gospel. That is not what we believe in. We believe ukikufa umekufa. Hakuna maombi itakujeji pale umeenda. Tunaelewa eh? Na ni vizuri kujua hivyo. Hakuna purgatory, hakuna. That's a creation of man. And if I dare say so, a very lucrative way of raising finances. Very lucrative. Because people can give anything. If you know your son has died and he was not going right, but if you can give a giving that is good, the Lord will take them from there and take them to heaven. People spend millions trying to do that. But your living of going to heaven or hell is now. It's what you do. So there is purgatory. Let's now leave it. That one is not even there. We don't even find it in the Bible. In our regular Bible, you find Sheol, hates, and hell. Sometimes we combine them. In fact, I, should, I, dare, I can add another one. Eh? The lake of fire is still there. All this. Now, we'll find Kate and Sheol are mentioned like the same thing. They are mentioned like the same thing. So, they are actually the same thing. And this is what happens. And even there is paradise. It's also mentioned in the Bible. So, all these things. So, sometimes it's very confusing. But the way personally I get it is that when people die, when somebody dies, even now, they actually don't go, they, they go to paradise, but that is not the heaven that we talk about. After judgment is when we shall go to heaven. It is in the, the book of Revelation, you'll find that. There is paradise, and then there is hate, and I will explain to you, I want to qualify this so that you understand. So if somebody is not born again, nanemutu wadambi, akikufa, haedagi paradise. Ata tukisema ati yamenda pale pazuri, na... Na mungu aweke, roho yake, mahali pema, peponi. Hakuna story kama hizo, anaenda hate, which I can also call hell. Anaenda huko. Yule, ameokoka, anaenda paradise. But, it's the same place, divided by a valley. How do we see that? Tunaona wakati, raza raza nakufa and the rich man. And the Bible says, the rich man, alieda hate. Nae, raza raza, akaeda hate. But it was divided by a big lift. But now, to know a rich man, akiongea kwa, akiongea, akiongea kwa, kwa, kwa um, Abraham, akimuambia, si, si wezi vuka, anambiwa, kuna, there is a big guy we cannot cross. It was the same place, divided by, but heaven and hell, Revelation chapter 21, John the Revelator is saying, and I saw a new heaven coming, na wale ambao watakuwa kifanyo judgment, wataeda the new heaven. That's on the cross. When he talks to the thief, Alimuambia Leo, we shall go with you in paradise. Are you understanding? Eh? That's how we differentiate it. I think I love that school of thought. I find like it is more palatable than the others. So, and when you read the book of Revelation, Bado in Asema, hell and hates will be thrown into the lake of fire. After judgment, after judgment, while they were poor, Bado they are suffering. You are in hate. They are suffering. Lakini, after judgment, 
all of that watachukuliwa and they will be thrown in the lake of fire which is the second death. That's what the Bible says. So saizi, what do I do lake of fire? Mm -mm. They are being marinated. Bwana <laughs> sifiwe. The lake of fire is later, after judgment day. And you can read that. Those that, if you are born again, you go to paradise. But then, after that, after judgment day, after judgment day, we shall see a new heaven and a new earth coming down from heaven. To live forever. So there is that. And the Bible explains how it shall be. That there will be no more sun. For the glory of God shall shine. So now, Yesu kwa msaraba, amekufa, what we have read in the, uh, in the Apostles' Creed, he descended to hell. But let's read in the book of 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. I want to connect that with, with, the, with the book of Colossians and we will pray. For Christ died for sins once for all. The righteous for the unrighteous. To bring you to God. He was put to death in body, but made alive by the Spirit. Verse 19. Through whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison. Mm -hmm. Let's move on. Who disobeyed long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built? It is only a few people, eight in all, who are saved through the water. Mm -hmm. Let's move on. Oh, I'm at Marisa. Okay. That's the end of that chapter. Eh? I'll connect you. Oh, yes. And this water, okay. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you. Not the removal of dirt from the body. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. You can, you can read it. But it, it says, eh? it says, let me explain again what it says. I've given you up to there. Is that Peter is trying to say, he's trying to explain the crucifixion, the dying of Jesus, and the ascension. And he says that he went to the prison. Some of the texts in the Greek, they talk about Sheol. He went to Hades. Kwenda kuhubiria hao. Dio mtu unasikia mtu wakiuliza. Na wale abao hawakusikia neno la mungu. Wataenda wapi? They had it. Because he went there to Hades to preach to them. And he preached to them. Those that were in prison. He preached to them. But now, let's read, let's read uh, Colossians 2.13. You shall read in, in NIV and also in King James Version. Eh? When you are dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins. Because crucifixion is about forgiveness. Having canceled the written code with its regulations that was against us and that stood opposed to us, he took away it away, nailing it to the cross. And I will explain a little there. Having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Now listen, the devil was very powerful. Before the cross, the devil was very powerful. He had in his, because the Bible is very legalistic, I told you. Very legalistic. In fact, if you go back, if you go, let's do in King James. I think King James might talk about that. A you being dead in your sins and uncircumcision of your flesh hath quickened together with you, having forgiven you all your trespasses. Verse 14 is the one. Huh? Blotting out the hard writing of ordinances or legal things, legalities that were there that was against us. Because let me tell you, when you hear the judgment seat, you know, I've told you God is a judge. And the Bible talk, talks about him that way. The Bible talks of Jesus as an advocate. He's our advocate. The Holy Spirit as a witness. And the devil as an accuser. Those are the things that are written. Because it is actually how it will be in the judgment day. But now, the devil had evidence. The devil, even by the time Jesus is coming to be crucified, had the evidence against humanity. That it has sinned. And therefore, none of us should go to heaven. Those were the evidences that he had. But look what Colossians is saying. Eh? Blotting out the hard writing. Let's now go in NIV. That Jesus blotted that by the cross. Aka brought out. Aka told you evidence. That there is no evidence against you. Hmm? The, 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 blotting out the hard that was against us. Which was contrary to us. And took it off the way. Needing it on the cross. 
So here on nailing of the cross was actually Jesus showing by his blood that there is no evidence. The devil has no records. Ni kama hii. Ile kulifanyika. Kuleta hakuna there hakuna evidence. Ni kama ni kama 2007 hakuna mtu alifanya makosa Kenya hakuna mtu kwa sababu evidence was wiped out. Now the same thing that will happen and the devil is a liar he is a deceiver anafanya every time you feel there is guilt umefanya dhambi let me tell you we have to look at the cross and realize NIV 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 put it on NIV huh? brought out that everything that was written against us not even then i want you to understand even now if you have sinned you go to the cross the evidence is gone but do we ever live on that reality we don't Sometimes the devil deceives us and we always carry the sins with us. Having canceled the written code with its regulations that was against us and that uh, that stood opposed to us. He took it away, needing it on the cross. Then in Asema, now here we are able to see when he went to hell. Let me tell you. Demons could not because they take they are in the custody of hell. Demons take the custody of hell. Na kuna wakati nilimweleza mtu akikufa sasa mtu akikufa sasa hapa tuseme mtu amekufa what happens? Akikufa hivi. Unajua yeye anajua anga amekufa. Amepata accident amekufa. What happens? And the Bible explains it again the story of the rich man and Lazarus. Inasema alipokufa angels appeared to take him to paradise because they are the ones that are custodians of paradise. Akikufa ati angels came wakamchukua wakampeleka to paradise kama wewe hujui Mungu na hujamwamini ukikufa saa hizi demons appear wanakuja wanakuchukua na wewe unajua i have been preached to Ame, you cannot turn back wanakuchukua wakikuvoka koka wewe that's my assumption <laughs> wakikupeleka heads wao wanakupeleka heads to suffer hiyo ni naona the rich man akisema nataka mpaka maji hakuna na hata pata na hata kaa hivyo you know the issue is they are, they, they, they are punishing you they are torturing you and that's what hap- the real, that's how, what it happens but now when jesus appeared in hades they are confused they are trembling this is the son of god now he has come in power they didn't realize that they thought he was weak on the cross but kukufa hivi he descended to hell kwenda huko and what did he do there let's go to verse 14 verse 15 and having disarmed the powers and authorities akachukua power that they had powers and authority he made a public spectacle of them triumphing them by the cross najua huko alikuwa anachukua the power that they had because they had out of power they could control things na hiyo akaichukua and he ascended with it that power hiyo power ndio tunaambiwa na tumeketi juu na Yesu kwa ufalme tukiwa na hiyo power that we shall decree a thing and they shall become but you see we don't take it that he went he disarmed them kuna power walikuwa na legal power they had power over dominion ndio naona shetani akitempt Yesu anamwambia naweza kukupatia ufalme na nikupatia he had out of power lakini hii yote ilichukuliwa msarabani alipokufa he decided disarmed them that is why when you are in god the devil can try to attack you but he is unable but the problem is we don't even realize the power that god has given us nadio is it efficient that says that i may know him and the power that resurrected him because there is power he took the power the devil was disarmed ni kama mtu amekuja kwako na amekuja na a gun hiyo gun imechukuliwa na wewe umepatiwa na wewe bado unatetemeka. Wewe ndio uko na ako hapo na amefungwa. Ako disarmed, ako hapo. Unaambiwa chukua ushukani. Unatetemeka. Unasema lakini unajua yeye ni powerful. Unaambiwa si powerful. Wewe ndio you have the pistol. Do what you need to do. But you are there and that's what happens to us. And that's why sometimes I think God anatuona naona sasa hawa watoto wangu. I have given them power. I have disarmed the enemy. They have the power, but we don't use that power. We are still trembling with fear. But the devil Bible says even demons by the mention of his name shudder or tremble by the kujua wanajua Yesu vingine 
wanamjua Yesu wanamjua wakisikia nini wana they shiver na yeye aliteremka huko akachukua mamlaka na hiyo mamlaka ametupatia praise the lord if you forget everything about the cross remember that jesus let's go there took disarmed them na akaenda na hiyo power na hiyo power sisi ndio tuko nayo my question is he made a public spectacle of them triumphantly unajua public spectacle ni huko alikuwa anatembea kama kwake bwana sifiwe alikuwa anatembea hate hivyo kama wanamuona demons bowing before him Waki, unajua zilikuwa zinafikiria huko ni public spectacle waka make huko wote wakimuona mpaka everything mimi ile na shidwa kuna mtu huko alihubiriwa na akakataa uone huyu ako deceived because he preached he preached to them that were in prison that had been in prison na akahubiri huko kulikuwa crusade hate bwana sifiwe kulikuwa na hiyo na akahubiri na na akaoneshana mamlaka yake na akatoka na hiyo power na akaenda nayo na sasa he is seated at the apostles creed at the right hand of god he disarmed them my brethren we have that power how are we going to use it now because i finished my sermon let me mention about what i want us to do because on wednesday the next two or three wednesdays i'll be preaching about curses curses it's something that I, I has been put in my heart but i have been studying and reading a lot and trying to research a lot because i want to talk about the power that god has given us to bring to bring down every curse that is upon us and the bible says cast is the man that is hanged on the tree so jesus took all our curses some of us believe that they are cast nani sawa inawezekana but now this power tumepatiwa why are you trembling because somebody has said i'm going to curse you or has cast you we've got to know how to use this power to break every curse every spell every word of magic that has been spoken against us by the power that we have received on the cross bwana sifiwe so i will not teach that one i will not preach on the sunday service i will preach it on the uh, evening service if you are available come we shall then have one day when we shall pray breaking down all the curses that have been spoken against us some of them are curses that have been spoken we never did anything but they were spoken out there or things that we, that were done that brought curses over us because of disobedience some curses have attached themselves to us we've got to break them we have the power we have received the power to break every curse i don't have time to explain it a little more but i feel like i need really to show you about how israelites were cast because of jericho and what they had disobeyed god that they were getting defeat even when they went to small nations like ai wanapigwa joshua na rara bere ya mungu anauliza mungu how after defeating all after having all this victory how can this small small nation defeat us hata walikuwa make wamekafanya chini sana walikuwa wametuma sijui 3000 3000 ame waende hako maliza nene nako walipigwa wakapotea wakauawa Joshua na Rahab ya Mungu anamuliza how Mungu anamwambia ni vile kuna watu wamefanya kitu in the camp na hiyo kitu ndio imefanya mchapwe kuna defeat tunapata kwa maisha yetu kwa sababu kuna watu kwa familia zetu ama kwa our lineage wamefanya vitu visivyo but we have the power to disarm the enemy because the enemy is, is very very legalistic anajua kuna mwanya there is a gateway that has been created in your life but by understanding we are able to grow unajua what the devil has made us become weak ignorance ignorance haujui unajua watu wakianza ku can, can we stand up can we stand up kindly because i want to finish watu wakianza kuelewa vitu wanaanza kupata unajua you know what has happened in kenya People have started understanding things. President anasema kitu. Watu wanasema tunaenda kotini. Hata president amefika pahali hata anaambia watu na msinipeleke kotini. Unajua kwa nini? Watu wameerevuka. Wanajua constitution haisemi hivyo. Ana anasema finance bill. Wanasema tunaenda kotini. Wanaenda kotini anaambiwa haukufanya vizuri. Anarudi kwa parliament itegenezwe. Sasa mimi na wewe Biblia hatuijui. So shetani anatumia ignorance. Anasemi rais ni shetani. Bana sifiwe. 
But shetani is very legalistic. Anatumia vitu kutocha you in your life. Uendelei kwa your life. Lakini kwa sababu hauelewi, I don't know, unateseka tu, wakati utateseka, wakati utajua, unaenda bele ya mungu unasema, he does not have any legal ground to do this. The devil cannot make me suffer this way because you have given me power. Unaanza kuwa na maisha yako, ikibadilika. Wana sifiwe. Vitu zingine zimefungika, an iron ceiling in your life. Kuna mahali hauja fika. Lakini hizi iron ceilings, zita bomoka in the name of Jesus. But you must first of all, have that knowledge in you. Some of us are not hungry enough. You are not hungry enough to get, na unajua ceiling zingine ukizitoa, si zako, umetoa mpaka the next generation. They will not suffer. Some giants you need to kill in your life that your children may not suffer them in their journey. They have their giants. Some of us, we una, mpaka kukawenu, giants hakuwa, we bado unazipigana nazo. Za kukawenu, za baba yako, na wewe. Sasa huko unabita kari sana. But once you understand, wa ukielewa tu about the death and crucifixion of Jesus, eh, job opportunities will be searching for you. Watu watanza kukuja kwa kwa mpaka unashindwa. What is happening? Things will be working your way. Things will align themselves because of the power and that's where you also understand about prayer. Unaanza maombi, vitu zinaanza kufanyika in your life. Wana sifiwe? Let's pray. Father, we give you praise and we thank you. Thank you because of your word. May you teach us, O oh God, to understand that we may know the power that resurrected Christ. That God, it may be operational in our lives, O oh God. That circumstances will change in our lives. We shall become men of honor, men of dignity, men of character. Women who shall change our nation and even our trajectory in our families, O oh God. Our children will not suffer the broken bridges along our way because we are building new bridges that are better. No ceiling that will be above us that will protect us to go to the next heights in our lives. I declare wellness. I declare goodness, oh God. Thank you because of the power of the cross. For we know that our enemy is disarmed and we have the power. As we are praying, I want to ask whether there is anybody who is not born again but you want to give your life to Jesus. Kindly lift up your hand. It's the beginning of you seeing the power of God in your life. Lord, I thank you and I give you praise. This we pray, believing and trusting in the name of Jesus. Can we say amen? Amen. One of the things of having power of God is in obedience. If you have been tithed, if you have tithed in the course of the week or you are tithing right now, kindly uh, come forward. I want to pray for you. Is there somebody like that? Just, just come forward very, very fast because let me tell you, and I'll be teaching, what I'll be teaching about uh, on Wednesdays, come. Kujeni, utasoma kitu. Naita kusaidia kwa maisha yako. Some of the instances I'll be able to give you my real life testimony of the things that I have done, in, even in our family, that have broken curses that we knew. This, is, this could only have been a curse. There was no way to explain it, but God did it for us. Lift up your hands. Father, I thank you because of the giving of your people. We give in obedience to your word because we know that God Obeying you is better than sacrifices that we can give. And in obedience to your word, these brethren have given their 10% of everything you've given them. The Lord, in doing so, you may honor them by protecting what they have in their lives, O oh God, that the, the devourer will not be able to destroy it. I speak an open heaven, I speak wellness, I speak goodness, and I declare it as well in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Can we all say amen? Thank you. You can put your offering there. Thank you. I, uh, now we are going to give our offerings. You can take them out. Take your offering out. Amen. Put it in an envelope or if you have it on your phone, uh, you can be upstanding still. Now we knew you to tell you on bear. These things we do by faith. I've come to understand that the walk of the, walk of the cross is a walk of faith. Amen. Just prepare it. Just rise up. Father, I give you praise and I thank you. We have heard your word and we have understood it, O oh God, that we have received power because of the blood of Jesus on the cross. And the Lord, the enemy, is defeated because Jesus died on the cross. And Lord, in love, we come to you to give an offering because your word tells us that we shall not come to the house of God empty-hearted. So we are giving you the best. That God, you may in return bless us. And that God, you may bless us as your word says. So we are giving in faith. 
and by faith. Knowing that God in due season, we shall also have a harvest. So we give you praise and we thank you. This we pray, believing and trusting in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's give offering. <laughs> 